G'day ladies and gentlemen and good morning. Today I want to give you seven reasons why I personally believe every landscape photographer needs a tripod in their camera bag. I'm going to explain to you why, so stick around and roll that intro. Good morning, you beautiful people from an absolutely beautiful location. Yamnik Church chasing sunrise. I still am chasing that elusive, beautiful, epic sunrise that I want from Yamnik Church. But that's a great thing because it means I can come back to this location and keep chasing that image. But today we are talking about seven reasons why I personally believe you need a tripod in your camera bag if you are a landscape photographer. What you are sitting on, what I'm using right now. I love them. I'm going to give you seven reasons why. But with most things, there are negatives behind that, which I will talk to you about also. But on this channel, I like to play tips, tricks, and reviews, saving you time and money in your landscape photography. But mainly, we love to do this. Get out in this epic world, take photographs, teach, learn, educate, and everything landscape photography based. So if that interests you, after this, drop below and subscribe for future content. But seven reasons why I personally believe you need three legs and a little head to put your camera on. The first one is what we've already done this morning, about half an hour ago, we're about two or three minutes away from sunrise and it is low light photography. Now it can be low light or astrophotography work. Now, there are two things we can do with this. We can either get a blurry image, which obviously we don't want because as a landscape photographer, we're always chasing razor sharp or pin sharp images. Or secondly, we can bump up our ISO. Now, if we bump up our ISO, we are gonna introduce noise into the image. Now, I am not the biggest person to introduce noise into the image, so I try and very, very steer clear away from introducing noise. I wanna shoot at a native 160 ISO. So what I'm doing there, 160 ISO, getting my composition down and shooting that image. Now, but Reducing the ISO to 160, we've got no noise, we might have a 15 second shutter speed, and obviously we cannot hold the camera for 15 seconds. Olympus, Fujifilm, obviously with the Ibis, we can get sometimes one, two, three seconds out of it handheld, but it's still not razor sharp. Also that allows us to do with landscape photography is use an aperture around F9, which is the sharpest we can possibly get out of our lenses. So native 160 ISO, F9, and we can work our shutter speed around the lighting conditions. Now obviously if it's astrophotography, we might want to shoot at 1.4 F2 to get the Milky Way in, still using around 800 to 3200 ISO. Obviously we still cannot hold for 25, 20, 15 seconds, whatever it is. So that is the first reason why you need a tripod in your camera gear. Moving on to reason number two. There's no better feeling waking up before the world, listening to the world waking up, getting that first ray of light, moving me on to reason number two, time-lapse photography. That's what brought me out here this morning to shoot at Yamnik Church. On the drive up, I knew there wasn't many clouds in the sky, so I was going to shoot time-lapse because what was moving was going to show you. But time-lapse, obviously I shot five second intervals, 240 images, I cannot move the camera. So that is a clear reason why we need a tripod in this. Now you might not be a time, time lapse photographer. I wasn't two or three years ago, but I wanted to bring it in to 2019. So of course I needed a tripod to do this type of photography. Great for B-roll, really good for a scene, and hey, in stock footage, it does sell quite well. So that is reason number two, time lapse photography. Okay, I know you're just waiting for number three and that is shooting panoramics. Every year I make New Year's resolutions on what I want to improve on, shoot more of, and this year was hands down panoramics. Now, I'm like a junkie. I am a 
addicted to shooting panoramics. I love what they do. They tell a great story. And also, I have a huge fascination to print panoramics. Now, if you don't know how to shoot panoramics, please head up here and watch this very basic on how to shoot a panoramic. If, if you think, and I'm sorry to say, if you think you can hand hold and stitch around to shoot a panoramic, you are entirely wrong. If it's windy, if it's low light, if it's perfect conditions, if you go from shooting like this to then implementing the basics of what I can teach on how to shoot panoramic, and then going into Lightroom, whatever, and putting it into perspective, there is a huge difference. So from left to right shooting, allowing with this really cool uh, neck from the tripod, leveling everything it is super, super, super important. I cannot implement that enough. You will take your panoramics to another level, but you cannot do it without a very, very good tripod. You can do it with basic tripods, but the better tripod you get, you'll notice a huge difference because leveling in panoramics is essential. It is everything. So how did I learn? By getting out and shooting more panoramics, leveling your tripod and just going home to see the results. So that is reason number three why you need a tripod in your camera bag. Okay, number four of why every landscape photographer should own a tripod, and it's this bazooka, a telephoto lens. For the last 18 months to two years, I am fully addicted to shooting telephoto. It's just something about it. It's very hard to explain unless you shoot telephoto photography. Compressing your landscape or just picking out a certain area that you love about the vista and focusing on that area but this also causes problems. Obviously we want to shoot around F9 to F11 in our landscape photography to get the best at focus we possibly can throughout the whole image. Now, when we do that and then we telephoto, we're obviously reducing the amount of light we can let in because we're just picking a particular subject. We haven't got the whole light source to take in. Therefore, when we zoom in, we want to keep a native 160 ISO like we are on the X-T3. This causes problems. It reduces our shutter speed. So say we're shooting at 1 over 60, wide open at 16 mil. We can press to almost 135 mil like we are now. Chuck a polarizer on to cut through the haze. It's going to reduce it by another one third to two thirds of a stop. So therefore we're getting around the very touchy subject of 1 over 10 or almost a second of a shutter speed. As we said before, it's very hard to hand hold that. Now what also you want to do is because of telephoto, every one millimeter movement in the background, that's like a 10 meter movement. So allowing us to have a tripod, we can set it up at 135 mil. The, the composition is done. I am set in. I can put a two second timer on, but most importantly, I put a 10 second timer on. Because as I said, all that verberation, vibration, we want to eliminate all that to have a razor sharp image. F9, 160 ISO, 10 second timer, we can get the telephoto image pin sharp as possible. Fantastic, why wouldn't you want to own a tripod? Now, going back to all that, if we wanted to shoot low light sort of stuff, a tripod is, is like necessity if you are shooting telephoto during low light. So, why not get a tripod? Number four and number five, I'm trying to join together. So I'm still shooting telephoto photography because as I said, I love it so much. But number five is long exposure photography. Something I will put my hands up, I don't do enough. I don't know it well enough, I don't know it often enough, and I don't know enough about it. So maybe 2020 to shoot more long exposure, maybe even black and white long exposure. Not what I'm used to, but photography is about getting outside your comfort zone. But one thing I do know 
is that bee is very friendly. Welcome to Slovenia, the home of bees. But what I do know is long exposure photography, you 112% need a tripod. You can do things like I've already spoken about, low light, which is longer exposure. You can do time-lapse long exposure. You can do astrophotography, which is a form of long exposure. But in this case now, the long exposure I'm talking about is just focusing on a subject and I've got some clouds moving in a valley here just with a tree sticking up shooting all the way at 200 mil got a 10 stop on and just trying to get some motion blur in that so you can do seascape all this sort of stuff but you need you need a tripod the bigger and sturdier in long exposure probably the better especially if you're doing four six ten minute long exposures which I personally don't enjoy but I guarantee you, you cannot stand still for four minutes. If you can, probably sell your services as a tripod man. You'll probably get some work around. But reason number five, long exposure photography. Right here guys, reasons number six and seven. Number six, my personal favorite type of photography, time blend. There's one thing I can guarantee you 100% need a tripod for this. If you're wondering what time blend is, don't worry, you're one of many people. Time blend is basically getting different moments of time and blending them together. So take this image from Logpod Mangarten in the northern part of Slovenia in the winter. This image is composed of two different moments of time. The sunset and then darkness with the village lights on. Sunset occurred at around 4 p.m. in the winter, but the image of the lights turning on occurred at about 10 past five. One thing I can 115% guarantee you that the camera did not move. It's literally impossible to shoot this type of photography, same as time-lapse photography, long exposure photography, without a tripod. So that is all done in post-production, but in camera, I've needed to set the composition up, taking the sunset like a normal photographer would, then captured the cityscape like a night cityscape photographer would and blend them together in post-production. It's impossible to do without a tripod. So that is the sixth reason why. But the seventh reason why I've got 50% here, 50% here, it is the composition. Now, I wanna take you through why me as a composition photographer and a landscape and travel photographer need a tripod. When I go out, I concentrate so much on one photo, possibly two if I know the location extremely well. Yamnik Church, I can walk around and get different compositions because I know the location very, very well. But let's say I go to the Fair Islands tomorrow. I've never been there, I don't know anything. I will concentrate on one photo. For me, the composition is very, very important. So I will knuckle down without a tripod first, getting the composition that I want. Then when I found it, I'll go and grab the tripod and set it up and wait for different light situations to occur throughout the time. So for me, that's why, that's my reason number seven because composition in the landscape is everything for me. And I don't wanna move because I wanna capture the best quality of light throughout the duration of one hour, two hour period, however long it is. But the other 50% of me understands when I first started photography, I was looking at these incredible landscape photographers with a portfolio of hundreds of images around the world. And then when I went out, I wanted to capture 10, 15 images at sunrise, but I quickly realized that these people have spent years and years capturing these images. So I understand that they go out and they can get more images without it, but you have to bump up your ISO. You might get a little bit of shake in the image. You might not get the sharpest image all the way through because you might be lose, using higher apertures. All these things, I don't want to do that. I want sharp images at the perfect aperture at the native ISO of 160 in Fujifilm. But I do understand moving around with a tripod, without a tripod, sorry, you're much more freedom. Take my friend Chris Air Walker, hates tripods, 
that his type of photography is travel and documentary. Landscape's just something that he gets into a little bit. So for him, totally understand that he doesn't want a tripod. Capturing the family, the villages, the car journey that he's on, it's all about the storytelling for him, not the one main hero image out of the whole thing. But guys, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me below. But my question to you today is, do you use a tripod? If so, what type of photographer are you? But mainly, I wanna know, are you a landscape photographer not using a tripod? If you are, please convince me, how are you doing this? I understand the extra weight in the bag, especially carrying two. If you're a vlogger like me, you're carrying two tripods, two cameras, it does become heavy. But for me, it's necessity. It's like my right leg. I need it to walk around and do what I do best. All the links to my workshops are in the description below, but that is me done from the beautiful location here in Slovenia, and I guarantee you I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao.